Hi there guys, it's Mike from MTQ Bushcraft here and welcome to another video on the channel. I'm on a property today where I do a little bit of shooting and a friend of mine works here, he's the groundsman looking after the place. It's in between Christmas and New Year and he's asked me for a bit of a favour. He's bought himself a bell tent, quite a large one, and also a stove to go inside the bell tent. And if you're familiar with that kind of setup, you know that you need to make a hole in the top of the canvas for the flue of the stove to pass through. You can sometimes get away with passing the flue out a window or out the door, but he wants it done properly because it involves quite a lot of stitching. And also I'm gonna do a little bit of leather work, just something simple, but it's just gonna reinforce that area where the actual baffle bolts onto. Instead of bolting it just to thin canvas, we're gonna bolt it to three mil leather, which is then stitched into the actual canvas itself, making for a more permanent setup, and it means it can be unbolted and bolted back up again repeatedly without kind of wearing away that canvas there and causing it to fatigue over time. This is a little portable tool kit for some of my leather tools when I go somewhere and I've got a job to do from someone who wants a favor normally. If I open this up, um, we've just got a few things in here. This is the metal that they usually bolt straight to the canvas. We'll be making one out of leather that this straps to. What we'll do though is we'll go take a look at the actual tent itself and the stove. And then I'll go over what I'm specifically gonna use to do this job when I actually come to do it. So we'll take this and we'll go check out that bell tent. So this is the bell tent just here. This is a Sibley Ultimate Pro, four meter. Heavy bell tent. Uh, this is more suited for a group of people who maybe have a vehicle or some kind of transportation. He's entrusting me to cut a hole in it. <laughs> a little bit nervous, but I'm sure it will go well. But we'll get inside and I'll have a look and see what we can do. He's gonna need to mop this thing out after I'm done with it. Here we are, we're inside. Very windy day today, and uh, you can see how being in something heavy like this really does uh, make it comfortable. But here's the stove just here. This is a nice stove actually, I prefer it to the Frontier one. It's made in the UK, and it's a KP Stoves Traveller. It also comes with a, a water tank on the back that gives you hot water when you need it. And obviously the flue is much longer than this. There are some other parts on the floor over there but it's gonna be going through this canvas material just at the top. So this is the baffle, and he's already cut the silicon um, hole out of the baffle there for the flue to go through. Now this is actually lead here, so you've gotta be a bit careful. You can bend it very easily, but you've got some holes through it, and it's obviously rubber on the other side there. And you, it comes with these two metal um, rings here, and one goes on the outside like that. So you imagine this will be on the outside of the actual tent. So this clamps down like that, and this comes in from the other side, inside the tent, and clamps the material, and then you have a, a baffle there that the flue can go through. But as I said before in the workshop, um, bolting that to canvas, this one layer of canvas, is it's not gonna be the best in the long term. You know, and really with a product like this you've spent a good 700 plus pounds on, you, you want longevity. You don't wanna be worrying if you've gotta take this off looking at the canvas there. So um, I'm not going to use any adhesive for this, I'm just going to use needle and thread. And the reason being is if we need to make any changes to it, I don't like things being permanent with glue. Glue is something I try and never use. Always just use needle and thread, maybe a bit of wax here and there, traditional methods. That way it can be taken apart, it can be mended if it needs to, and um, it can even be improved in the future if we need to do that. But I've marked out the area just here, um, you can see all I've done really is, is measured the stove so it's approximately 18 inches away from the wall of the tent and um, it's quite high as well from this canvas at the top there. So as long as it's 18 inches away plus it'll be fine. He wants the stove here by the door so when he comes in he can put his boots down by the stove, any kit can go here. And you can see we've got lots of space for people to sleep um, and, uh, and potentially stay nice and toasty. So uh, that's all really we need to do in here. And this is the key. Make that out of leather and, um, and then we're good to go. So, what are we gonna need to do this? 
These are the tools I'm going to be using to do the job with. I'm going to be using some thread, obviously, to stitch the leather baffle to the canvas. I'm using Tiger Thread, really nice artificial wax sinew style thread. It's synthetic, it's rot resistant, it's solid really, and it's not going to absorb water. This stuff's very, very hard to break, almost impossible really, by pulling on it. Uh, I've got a lighter because of the actual thread, so we can singe it off. First time you've probably ever seen me with a lighter in a video, but they are useful. Um, a multi-tool, this is just a Gerber multi-tool, you can use a pair of pliers or snipe nose pliers would be fine. I've got a punch to actually make the holes for the M8 bolts, this is a fairly decent punch actually. The Stanley knife, going to need that to cut the leather out, you could probably do with a thinner one, but this is all I have. A straight edge, we have a stitch gouge here as well, really useful tool so the thread sits in almost like a trench. Um, a recess in the leather, meaning if you're brushing on the surface of the leather, you don't wear away the thread over time. And uh, we will be using that. I don't think we'll use this tool here. I won't really talk about that just yet. Some awls, useful for just making holes, pinning things in place, just for pricking things to uh, help you out. A stitch awl. We'll be using this to do our stitching. A pair of scissors and a dead blow hammer, uh, which is far too large, but Lee from RB Customs is making me a dead blow hammer and I don't want to buy one yet because his will be really nice so we're just going to make do with that. You could use a sharpie or a pencil to draw this on. I would use a sharpie um, if I wanted you to see it because of the camera uh, but I'm, I often just do my templating with an awl itself and just scratch into the surface of the leather. Um, I don't use the other side, the suede side because it's obviously a lot harder to see but this means I don't get any overspill on the leather and um, the footprint's kind of small. So we'll just draw this out. But what I will do is I'll use the bolt holes and I'll actually use a sharpie for those. So I'm trying to want a bit more accuracy there. I'm just going to use the Stanley knife to do this. I'll just take my time. You can get special tools for cutting out circular things like this, but uh, you can probably tell I don't have that. I tend to work with very basic stuff and um, I just kind of make do, because I, I do quite a lot of crafts of varied types and I like using the same tools really for uh, lots of different things. But when you're cutting this out you make sure you don't tilt in at an angle, you want quite a nice flat edge. I'm going to cut the middle out later um, because I want a bit of rigidity in the piece of leather I'm working with and as soon as we take that central part out it will be very floppy basically and uh, a bit harder to work with. So we'll do that last but I'm going to tidy the edges up now. We are going to use this edging tool here, this is a French edging tool, uh, just going to go all the way around, smooth it off and then I'm just going to wet it very slightly and then burnish it, round it all off there um, and uh, make it look a little bit more presentable. So taking it off in a smooth motion like that will make it a bit easier for you. So that'll do for the edging, we've rounded that off quite nicely. I wouldn't say that that was the sort of burnish finish I'd do if I was making a nice piece of leather work, but he wants solid, not pretty, so that'll do the job. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll use the stitch gouge and we'll make a gouge all the way along the outside and then we'll use the stitch all and start actually making our stitch holes. And then we'll do one on the inside as well, but I'll do that last. 
I'm just marking this out first before I apply lots of pressure. You can see I'm just pushing it in. And the leather is dry enough really for us to do this. I would never do this unless the leather was completely dry because you'll get some warping. It isn't something you want at all. There we go. So I've gone round twice with the stitch all, just putting a medium pressure on first just to bed it in and then gone round again just to ensure that the actual um, pricking iron goes through completely. So we're going to go around the inner ring now and do the same thing. So that's part one completed. This will dry thoroughly now overnight and hopefully you'll join me in part two where I will be stitching this onto the actual piece of material onto the canvas out in that field there that we went in earlier. Hopefully the weather will be better for me. I don't mind snow but wind and rain can make it a little bit tricky so uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in part two. Take care.